In this little box is a bit of a surprise from HD Zero, and this is their new Halo flight controller. Now, this is different from the HD Zero AIO they released before, that was a flight controller ESC and HD Zero VTX in one. Instead, this is a fully fledged standalone flight controller, not only compatible with HD Zero, but you can also use it with DJI or Avatar HD. It also has a little bit of a party trick, and that is the fact that it has a fully-fledged Diversity Express LRS receiver built in as well. Now, today, what we're going to do is take a closer look at this flight controller. I'm going to give you an overview, talk about its features, the specs, the capabilities, and then at the end, I'm going to share with you some thoughts. Now, just before we get into this one, I do just want to say that I did get sent these flight controllers from HD Zero for free. I have not been paid to make this video. This video has not been seen by HD Zero. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. So what we have here is the HD Zero Halo Flight Controller. Now this is available in two different versions. Overall, the flight controller is identical. It is just two different gyro versions that are available. There is an MPU 6000 version and an ICM 42688P version. That means that you can choose the version that best suits your personal preference. There is a pricing difference as a result of the different gyros, but other than that, they both have exactly the same features. Okay, so taking a look at the first one. Now this is the MPU 6000 version here. It comes in this nice plastic case inside. You will find a nice set of instructions that has everything laid out. We'll take a bit of a closer look at that in a minute. And then inside, you will see we have the flight controller itself alongside its accessories. Now, you can see it is a 20 by 20 mountain flight controller with an M4 sizing, and its size is 29 by 30.5. Now, included with the kit is this little accessory pack. You can see we've got lots of mounting grommets. We've got our ESC wiring, and there's also a couple of 3D printed TPU pieces in there as well. Not sure what they're for. We'll take a look at them a bit more in a minute. Now, walking you around this flight controller in a bit more detail, and there is quite a lot to show you here because this flight controller has a bit of a party piece, and that is those UFLs that you see there, and they are not for analog FPV. Now, this flight controller is based on the STM32H743 chipset running at 480 megs. As I've said, you can get it in two versions, MPU 6000 or ICM 42688 gyro. It has dual becks on board. You have a 5 volt 4 amp back as well as a 9 volt 3 amp back. And that 9 volt 3 amp back is designed to power your digital VTX from HD0. This flight controller also has 16 megs of onboard black box storage. It has a number of UARTs available. So you've got TX and RX2, TX and RX7, as well as TX and RX8. There is dedicated telemetry for the ESC, which is RX4. There is a VTX MSP UART, which is this one over here. This is for your digital connector. So you can see that down there. You've also got a dedicated UART input for DJI HDL on RX3. There are buzzer pads, LED LED strip pads, a USB-C port for connecting into Betaflight. And as I've said, it is designed to be used with Betaflight and there is a dedicated target for that. The real party piece, though, is the fact that it has an Express LRS receiver built in, and that is not an SPI-based Express LRS receiver. It is a full UART-based one, and more than that, it's a diversity receiver as well. It is based on the ESP32 and two SX1280 receiving chipsets. They connect to each of the UFLs here, which gives you a full diversity Express LRS receiver built in on the UART1 port. That supports on 2.4 gigs and up to 10 milliwatts of RF output on the telemetry. The real great thing about this is because it is UART based, it has its own proper dedicated target, which is the dedicated HD0 Halo FC True Diversity receiver. And what's also cool about this receiver is that it does have a TXCO oscillator, so it is fully temperature controlled as well. This means you have a fully fledged Express LRS telemetry receiver on board, and that's going to save you time and space in your build. Looking around the rest of the flight controller, as I've said already, it is 29 by 30.5 in size and it has a 20 by 20 mounting pattern supporting M4. It supports three to eight 
S voltage input and it has dedicated sockets for your ESC over here you have your UART and then you've got your USB port now as I mentioned you get this little bag of accessories included with the flight controller that has our gummies we have our ESC connections and then we have a couple of 3d prints you might be wondering though what about the Express RS antennas don't worry they do include some when you get the box you need to open this up and lift the foam out and hiding beneath the foam is two 2.4 gigs antennas for the Express RS system don't worry you don't have to buy them separately you might think at first when you get this they don't include them but they are hiding under that foam now what's really great to see on this flight controller is the fact that HD0 have decided not to limit it in any way with regards to its compatibility with other systems. Whilst it's absolutely designed to be used with HD0, it is still compatible with any of the other digital FPV systems on the market. Now obviously HD0 are going to recommend you use it with their system, but they're not limiting you to that and in fact they even show you in the instructions how to use it with other systems. Now the Race version 3 VTX that I've got here is the one that they do specifically recommend you use it with for HD0 and that's obviously got the same mounting pattern however you can use it with the likes of DJI 03 you can use it with the likes of DJI 04 or you can even use it with Avatar HD as well we have that dedicated UART port over here that has TX and RX for telemetry you've got your power you've got your ground and then you've got your receiver input if you did want to use it with the DJI transmission units and the DJI remote controller what's actually nice about this when it comes to the likes of DJI 03 and 04 the pinout for the connector is already correct so for instance if you have the DJI cable as I have here this is directly pin for pin compatible compatible with the connector on the HD0 flight controller and it means you don't have to do any additional wiring. Now when it comes to ESC choice this is compatible with any of the other ESCs that are on the market. Obviously you're going to need to check the pinout is right but you can pair this with anything such as AM32, BL Heli S, BL Heli 32 though it doesn't exist or you can even pair it with something like the Voltara and specifically the Voltara Mini which I think is going to be a really nice pairing for use with this new flight controller. Now as you can see the Voltara Mini is a little bit bigger than the flight controller but obviously they're both 20 by 20 and I think this would make a nice pairing although it is worth taking into account that the pinouts between these are not the same you are going to need to repin the connector if you did want to use it with the Voltara obviously you can use it with many other ESCs that are available on the market but the mini specifically here looks a very nice option now whilst this is fully compatible with all the digital stuff there is no analog OSD chip on this as a result of that whilst you could technically use it with analog there'll be no OSD there's no camera pass through and you would have to have your own external analog OSD solution now just like much of HD Zero's products in the past we have lots of IO around it but there's also lots of really nice labeling on everything as well you can see all of the pads around the side are labeled up and there's even test pads located in various places around the flight controller as well okay so taking a closer look under the microscope there you can see that STM32H743 and then next to it you can see the Invensense MPU6000 gyro up there in the top corner you've got your ESP32 and then you've got your two SX1280 chipsets it's amazing that they've been able to get full true diversity onto this board even though it is a 20 by 20 mounting pattern you then got your oscillator there for the express rs which is a txco oscillator as well which is fantastic to see and then we've got our two ufls with all of our pads that go around the side now if we just take a look at the pads you can see we've got our sda scl there rx2 and tx2 we've got a nine volt pad a ground and then we've got our pads on the corner i'm going to talk about these a bit separately actually because they talk about these in the manual you've then there got rx8 and tx8 you've got 5 volt 4.5 volt we've got ground b plus and b minus for our buzzer and then if i scroll around to that side there you've got t plus and t minus t1 r1 and then the rest of these little pads that are located here you will also note around the board there are test pads located all over the place you've got some there if we flip it over to the other side you will see that there are a lot more 
test pads available on this side here. You can see you've got 5 volt. you got your 3.3 uh, .3 by the look of it. You've got ground. So you've got all of these test pads located around the board if you wanted to do testing as well. You can then see we have our motor plug with our wiring laid out on the top. So our connection order. And then over this side here, we've got our digital connector which has everything laid out as well. There are two buttons on this board. Obviously, you've got one for Express LRS, which is labeled there, and then you've got your one for Beta Flight, just like you would usually have. And then looking around on this side, we've got the rest of the options. So we've got our voltage regulators. As you can see, our two chipsets there, the MPSS04s, and then you've got, uh, yeah, two of them. You've then got your Winbond chip, for your black box storage and then we've got some additional protection circuitry over here looking at the board under the microscope everything looks really nicely done the component size on this board is tiny but you can see they've glued the components in various places so over here you can see that those components there are glued they're glued if we flip it over some glue on some of them there as well just to offer a little bit more protection and we've then also which is really nice got leds on the board as well so you can see you've got five volt and nine volt leds there you've got your fc leds over there so again hd0 have put a lot of effort in to making sure that you've got all of the information that you need available to you. Now, with regards to the build quality, it looks really clean, if I'm honest. It's really, really tidy. Something I haven't mentioned yet is the thickness of the PCB. It is really thick. And on the corners, they've also got castellated pads as well, where you wanted to go onto there if you wanted to. They're all really nicely done. You can also see that there's plating in the M4 mounting holes as well, which is really great to see with the ring all the way around. The PCB really does look nice and thick as well. We'll take a look at that in a second when we weigh the board too. Overall though, the quality looks really, really nice. Now this one here is the ICM version. So if I just flip it over, you can see here there's a bit of a difference. That gyro chip is missing on this one here. So let me just grab both boards next to each other and line them up the same. It's not going to be quite easy to show you under the microscope. But you can see there, we've got a gyro chip set there, which is the MPU 6000 and an unpopulated pad there. And then on this one, the MPU 6000 is unpopulated. And then the ICM chip is populated there. That is the only difference between these two boards. So one will have the gyro there. So if you've got the gyro there, you're the MPU 6000. If you've got the gyro there, you're the ICM gyro. So that's really the only difference between these two boards. Everything else is exactly the same. Okay, so checking the weight of the boards, we're just going to pop on my weight test first of all. 50 grams dead, which is good to see. So we will pop this one on. And that comes in at 6.20. And if we pop that one on, 6.23. Basically the same. There's a tiny amount different between the two, but basically 6.2 grams as you see it here. Now, as I did mention about the thickness of the PCB, we will check it with my vernier caliper. We will just pop it there. We've got no components there, and that's coming in at 1.6 mil. As I did show earlier, we do have that uh, castellation all the way around on those corner pads as well. Now, just looking at the instructions, there's a couple of things I want to show you here around those corner pads, but also the I.O. Now, on this side of the instructions, it gives you all of the specs. You have some info, you have the board layout, and you even have connections for different VTXs. And and they even show you how to connect it to DJI 03 or 04. It's exactly the same. And as I did show you, they have that dedicated port there for the S bus input if you need it as well. On this side, they show you the peripheral wiring. So you have your ESC connecting to GPS. You also here have the LED strip wiring. Now, this is the bits that I mentioned on the corners because you have your LED strips on the side and there's a different wiring setup depending if you want to use single color or you want to 
use a dressable. And there's some specific pads on the PCB that you need to adjust if you're going to use it with addressable LEDs versus using it with standard ones. You can see here it says shorted pad as default and that is those pads on this side here. So if we just line this up to get it right, there we go. You've got some little pads down there, which they show you that you will need to short or disconnected pad down there if you're going to use addressable. There's a different setup option if you want it. It has that five volt back with plenty of output on board for LEDs. So again, you're going to have no problems with that at all. Now, just powering it up to show you all of the different LED statuses that we have on the flight controller. Over here, we have our flight control LEDs. Over here, we have our Express LRS receiver LED, which is green. And then we've got our back LEDs over here. So you can see five volt and nine volt lit up red. We've got our flight control LEDs over here. And then the important one and the one you're probably going to look for the most is the little green Express LRS one. This is currently not bound to a transmitter. So as a result of that, it was flashing slow. And now you can see that it's entered Wi-Fi mode. So we'd be able to connect to this in Wi-Fi mode just like you would with any normal Express LRS receiver. Now, with regards to beat the flight, there is nothing different here. You can see we've got it connected at the top. You can see it's the HD0 Halo flight controller. Everything is the same as any other beat to flight based flight controller. There's no point in me going through everything here. You can see it on the bench and it's moving. All of the usual options. About the only thing you need to take into account is obviously your built in Express LRS receiver is going to be on serial port one. So UART one, and you want to make sure that's set to serial RX. And then you've got your UART five down here for your MSP. You'll want to configure it for your digital FPV system exactly the same as you would any other flight controller. Other than that, though, it's pretty much the same as anything else out there. Now, before I share with you my thoughts, we need to talk about price. Now, this flight controller is available in two versions. You've got the MPU 6000, which is available for $85, and then you've got the ICM 42688 version, which is available for $65. For either $85, or $65, you are getting a flight controller that not only supports all of the digital FPV systems, it also has that Gemini capable diversity Express LRS receiver built in as well with no downsides, not SPI based, full UART based, and you are getting a really nice tight package here. I think HD0, having looked at this, have done a really nice job on putting together a flight controller that suits the needs of many different people. They are clearly going to be aiming this towards the racing market because that is where they have been pushing a lot of their development in recent times. However, it still makes a great flight controller for anyone who's looking for a 20 by 20 stack. Obviously, they don't have their own ESC today, but you never know. They've made a flight controller. Could they make an ESC in the future? As I've said already, the real great thing to see is HD0 have not limited this to be used with just HD0, and it is going to be as viable for DJI or Avatar HD users as well. Now, if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it on the HD Zero website. I want to say a huge thank you to Carl for sending me each of these over to take a look at. They sent me either gyro version. As I've said already, I wasn't paid to make this video, but there will be a link to it below, which is an affiliate link. I do use affiliate links with very select vendors. HD Zero is one of them. If you don't want to use it, though, don't and just go to hdzero.com and order it yourself if you think it suits you. Now, before we finish this video up, I just want to say if you have found this video interesting, if there's anything I've missed, let me know in the questions below and I will try and answer it. And finally, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buying me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to make content in the future, please check it out. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons, everyone who donates via Buy Me A Coffee. We would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Look after yourself. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.